Great, I think I'm live. There we go. Turn off the sound. Let's get my chat up. There we go. Okay. So, welcome to my studio. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm working with a new microphone, so let me know if it's sounding okay or I've been having problems with my headphones. And let's see, I have a really cool technique for you to try out in your watercolor or mixed media, whatever. I like to add stuff. Sounds okay? Awesome. Hi! <laughs> By the way. So I'm going to be working on uh, this mixed media um, artistico. And it is 140 pound, 300 gm. Mm, I don't think it's 100% cotton though. Uh, this Prada plants one tree. I don't see anything. So it's probably just a cellulose watercolor, acid free. Yeah. But I thought I'd give it a try. It was fairly inexpensive and for experimenting on it's a great thing to try. So Hey, Vol, good to see you. Awesome. How are you doing? Hey, Dorothy. Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Is the weather starting to change over there in uh, the UK? Um, so today, you know me and my plants, I'm a gardener. So, I started playing with some leaves again. So this is a tomato plant, or part of one. And I purposely wanted it to wilt, to be limp. And the reason being is that it's easier for it to lay flat on my paper. So I did one ahead of time because this uh, particular technique takes a while to dry because you can't use your heat gun on it because it'll ruin the effect. So this is another one and I haven't taken it off yet. And it's still a little bit wet. But I'm, I, it's been sitting here for mm, maybe an hour and a half. <laughs> I really loaded it up. So I thought I would uh, maybe dry the back of it and see what happens. Because I want to take this off. I'm impatient. <laughs> but you should let it dry. If it takes overnight, you should let it dry overnight. So I'm just going to... I hope that's not real loud for you. And I'm just gonna try the back of it. We got rain there. Yeah, we have rain here too, Dorothy. It rained all last night and it's still raining. But I'm not complaining because we need the rain. So what I'm gonna do with this one is I'm going to enhance it with maybe some ink and then I'm going to use some gouache, maybe some colored pencil and we'll see what we get out of it. Hey Ann, good to see you. So I want this fairly dry. So if you plan on doing this, Try and let it dry on its own because you'll get a much better uh, texture. 
And I will show you how I did this with the other one. And I'll let that dry, but we'll play with this one or what I want to do with it. So before the snow comes, this would be a great thing to do to uh, just get a bunch of them and do a whole slew of them so you can play with them uh, later on in the uh, fall and winter. Now you could probably, if you wanted to, use some ink on these too. Like um, the way I do my uh, squished plants, so to speak, in the embossing machine. But not use the embossing machine. So, okay, it's a big reveal. Let's see what we get. Yeah, it's still pretty wet. If I were to leave it, it would have a whole lot more um, beautiful textures and stuff. I'm just going to sop up because it still had quite a bit. But it's not bad. I'm not going to ditch it. Okay, so there's... Isn't that cool? So it paints itself. Yeah, I love rainy days too. I, I have a steel roof so I can hear it on the roof and I love that. So I'm going to dry this now since I've pulled it. We need it badly. Oh, you had a really dry uh, season up in the UK? So isn't that gorgeous? I love this. And you can do this with pretty well any leaves. Because I'm not crushing it, we don't have to worry about um, having all the juices. And it gives you a different effect than, than the other ones that I typically do. This is a little different. It almost paints the leaves for you. Isn't that cool? And depending on your colors, it will depend on what kind of effect you get. So I'm going to put this aside and I'll show you how I did this. And we'll get back to that in a minute. So like I said, I picked this this morning. So it's nice and limp. And I squished it in between newspapers and a book. Now, really, I could reuse this one if I want. I might just do that. Now, what I like to do is have most of the paper or the, um, the plant with the backside down on the paper. That's where all the veining is. And then you'll get more um, effects because the top is smoother. We could try both ways, and like this one here. And we have all kinds of bugs <laughs> on this one. because They've eaten the leaves, but I think that gives it character. I kind of like it. So what I did 
And this is so easy. You got to give this a try. You'll be amazed. So I just took a, this is 140 pound watercolor paper. And I just took a spray bottle and I sprayed my paper with it for a fair amount. And then I placed, let's see, I placed my leaves and you could, you don't have to have a branch of leaves. You could have uh, individual leaves if you wanted to, but they want, you have to be able to have them fairly flat onto the paper. And the water actually helps them to stick to the paper. Um, this one's not going to curl so I'm going to just break it and just stick it down. Now this one doesn't have a lot. I'm going to put a little bit more water there because I want them to stick down. This one is the opposite side so we'll see what kind of effect we'll get out of that one. Not sure. So just make sure you're patting them down so they're fairly stuck down to your paper. That seems to be the trick. I love those eaten areas in the leaves. <laughs> it's funny, eh? Any other time you'd be screaming. All right, and the, and if you can get the the stem to lay flat too, that would be good good too. Hey Tiff. All right, so now what I want to do is use more spray it on top of the leaves, and take a fairly um, big brush that'll hold lots of water and lots of paint. Let's put, okay. Now granulating uh, watercolor would be beautiful with this. So I've got one here that's got a, a brown undertone once, it's, once it uh, granulates. So I'm gonna just paint some of these leaves on, right on top. And this is a fairly thick consistency. Lots of water. You don't have to do them all in the same color. You can switch it up. If you want to stick with maybe the stems in a different color or maybe, I don't know, certain leaves in a color, you could do that make these fairly um, I want a lot of this color you kind of have to move a little bit fast with this but you know you're not really painting anything you're just covering stuff and then I'm gonna switch to let's see Let's do some ochre, maybe in the bottom sections. Lots of water. This is this is a lot of fun, and you don't have to worry about uh, having a special machine like the embossing uh, big shot because this is all done on its own which is cool uh, I think I want it probably well we'll see okay so lots of color and let's see what other color we want to put on there 
I see the granulation already. The more water, the more the granulation, if you have granular uh, paints. Uh, let's do... Um, what other color? Something, maybe, maybe a red or an orange would be kind of cool. Let's do this um, pyro orange. Why not? Just a few little dabs here and there. That'd be cool. And maybe a little, little bit in here. Like that. And then I'm going to take just a clean brush. And I'm going to go around some of the areas and just bring those colors out into the paper. Just a bit. Soften those edges. You can leave areas too. Let them bleed. I uh, like this here. I think that's cool. Maybe I'll add a little bit. And you'll find that some colors are stronger than others and they'll push other colors out of the way, which is really cool. Um, let's see. Maybe a little bit of a darker green. I'm going to do this praline green here. I want a lot of Uh, definition in mind. So if you go just around some of the leaves, just on the edge, make sure you put it, you're putting enough water on. Like that. Okay. Oh, oh, hi, colorist. Um, first time in chat, would like to say if you could help out on a watercolor picture. Not sure how to do Jacqueline. Sure. Um, you can always get in touch with me. My email's in the description of the my channel. You can email me or uh, or even message me on Instagram or Facebook. I did a similar thing with leaves, but instead I use mica spray. I will try this one. Oh, that would be cool too, Jasper. Okay, so now I'm going to spray a little bit more just so that that's going to seep out. And what I'm going to do is, where did I put that paper? I'm going to put this back over top and I'm going to lay it with something on top. So I'm just going to take this over here for a minute, lay it down. And it'll sit there and I'll put this over top. It doesn't need to be heavy, heavy, but that'll stop it from blowing that much also. All right, so there's the one we that I started um, this morning. Now, to get the curls out, you can either put them in uh, under a heavy book or something overnight, and they usually curl out, or you can iron it. I've ironed mine before, and it works fine. So now what you can do is either enhance the colors by adding um, the same colors that you have here, but 
making them darker or you can also take your brush and take away so so you need a damp brush when you do this thanks jasper and so you can uh, remove different like right in here it's kind of blah so all you have to do is Now it depends on your paint because sometimes your paint stains pretty heavy, but you can lighten. You just wet the area and then press. Now there is a scrubber you can get, but I don't like to use the scrubbers too much because I find it uh, really roughs up the paper a little bit too much. I think I like the watercolor better than the mica spray. Oh, really? You get more um, detail with the watercolor. So let's make this a little bit lighter right there. And you can soften edges too. Uh, maybe you want, I, I do like this halo that's kind of produced around here. But you could, let's see, you could soften that in areas. So it's not as harsh. Just bring that color, blend it out a little bit into nothing. So it just softens the edges a little bit. It's just clean water. Uh, make this itch. A little softer there and then I think I'll what I'll do is um, do some pen work I uh, love the misty effect yeah isn't that pretty and you can do this with pretty well any leaf because we're not squishing it at all so and you want it to leave it out or even um, I'll put the hair hair dryer on hot and and uh, blow the leaf so it kind of bakes a little. That way it goes really limp. Kathy, do you do you think you would have lost the details if you did it on wet paper? Oh, I did put it on wet paper. It the trick is to make sure you leave it to dry. So um, it has to go on wet paper because the leaf needs to stick to the paper. Um, so when the paper's wet, the leaf sticks right down and then you're able to put the paint on it and it just seeps in then. But the leaf doesn't um, come up at all. And that way you get all of this um, intricate detail from the leaves. And, but the trick is to make sure that it dries completely. If I had to let it dry completely, I would probably have a lot more detail in these areas because when I lifted the leaves, they were pretty wet still. And it just, you know, once you lift, it just releases back into the paper. No problem. All right, so let's dry that again.
There you go. All right. So what I was thinking, um, I love anything with botany, flowers, vegetables, whatever it may be. And because this is a tomato plant, I thought it would be kind of cool if I had um, a little tomato sitting right here and did that in uh, gouache. And then we can uh, play with the colors and let's see, I need a pencil. There we go. You're welcome. All right. Now, um, I don't have a tomato in front of me. I really should. I believe, totally believe in reference. Big time. Everyone knows what a tomato looks like in their head generically, but if you want a specific type or you're really thinking about color and shadows and highlights and cast sh shadows and all that, then you really should have a, a reference. Um, just hold on. I'm going to get one. All right. That's one thing I do have is lots of seed catalogs and plant catalogs. So best way to get a look at flowers or whatever. Tomatoes. Um, there is a, a seed catalog you can get, and they, I believe, well, it used to be free. I don't know if it, it still is. Um, Whole Seeds, I think it's called, and it's huge, and they have the best photographs. Um, little cherry tomatoes. Different types. Well, let's do, I want a cluster, I think. Let's do this one here. Yeah. Looks like a good one. Let's see, or that one. I like this one, I think. So what I was thinking, Z, how are 
California. Okay, I'm just folding it up so I don't get distracted by the other ones. <laughs> All right, so let's put, uh, I'm just gonna use a pencil over top of this. I always, I like using um, pencils, but you can use whatever you want. And let's put, I'm gonna put a string of tomatoes down here. Like so. And we'll attach it to the stem here. So we'll go over parts and we're going to be using gouache. So don't have to worry about uh, the paint showing underneath because gouache will pretty much uh, hide it, I hope. I haven't used a whole lot of gouache. I'm fairly uh, new to it. What about you guys? Do you use gouache a lot? Or are you new, a newbie? I love the look of it when I watch people uh, online, but not that experienced. Let's see, we'll do that. It's gonna be like that. And then maybe another one around there. Uh, I'm gonna just put this one up here, I think. I'm just gonna do it on the opposite side. Like that. And maybe another one there. And one, two, three, four, one more. Oh, tabs or whatever they are. The okay. Ah, uh, no, no. No, have it. You don't have gouache? I thought I'd give it a try. Now, I know you can't do a lot of um, painting over top, like a lot of strokes. So, and so this is an experiment. <laughs> You're learning with me. Let's see, I think I will use, don't want to use my good paint brushes. So I'm going to use a little bit of a smaller, let's see. This one, that's pretty soft. That one's too soft. They, I think you're supposed to use a little bit of a not quite as um, soft brush. From what I understand, I could be wrong. Like I said, I'm just learning. Anyone else know? Should it be a soft brush or a little bit more uh, stiffer? Let me know if you know. There's a oh you have it okay have you haven't used any this is a little stiffer it might be good and what I have here and I have hardly used them it's the uh, master's class 
so you get 12. And I'm going to need a little palette. I have it soft. Oh, really? All right. Thank you. Okay. No, I don't want to use that one. Did I just put that? Okay, so I'm going to use uh, Lake Matter. Maybe some of that. Some white. Deep green. And yellow. This one. Let's go to, what type of brush do you use, Jasper? What make? Uh, that might work. Let's see. Or this one. This is the uh, Cotman Round. Windsor Newton Cotman. I have used designer gouache since college. I wonder if it's still the same. I'm sure it's still good since it's water soluble. You use the watercolor brushes, so this should do. Okay, thanks. I got an expertise here, thank goodness. <laughs> but that's how you learn. You try things, right? You gotta have fun. And am I right? Yeah, I'm a big fan of Windsor. Okay. So, this is a little bit. Um, I'm going to stir it. And very little water, right? I know that the consistency has to be just so. Yeah, and I'm not an expert. But I want to learn because I love the look of it. So a little yellow, a little... Okay. <laughs> oh my, oh, there it is. I was just going to say, I just put that down and I can't find it. This one's fairly thick. Oh, I just contaminated it. There. Uh, not use gouache for a long time may give it a go. Um, pencil sketched all my life and just started watercolor two, three months ago. Just learning, but can't get enough of it. <laughs> hey, Tiff. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's totally different. I was actually nervous with watercolor, getting into watercolor, because it was so different than um, acrylic. And I thought, eh, I don't know if I want to get into something I can't control. <laughs> but I did, and I love it. But I still love, I still love the uh, acrylic. I must say. These paints haven't been used in a while, so they're separating. But uh, 
Uh, I'm trying to remember. I did do illustrations with designer gouache because it's easier than watercolor. Oh, okay. So it might be another um, dangerous thing to get into, <laughs> buying wise. All right, I'm going to just do those for now, I think. Hmm, so this is learning. All right, so this yellow is a little bit thicker. So, uh, let's, I'm going to get some of this, um, other red. Two. This one's really separated. This is uh, Matter Lake Red. A little darker. More on the blue side. A little cooler. Nice color. More of the tomato color. Well, a little bit different, but we'll see. Can be fun. Uh, frees you up with marks of all kinds you don't expect. Yeah, exactly. Okay, better put these back before I spill them because that seems to be my way. <laughs> Yeah, I may as well put the green on too, since it's gonna eventually need it. So I, I've always loved mixed media, and I, I don't know. I I myself um, prefer a matte finish. So. The gouache is excellent because it's so matte. And you can put colored pencil on top. And I just thought it would be a, a good mixed media product for me anyways, because I like to use the colored pencils and stuff. That type of thing. All right. All right, let's get going. All right, so. I think you can see it. Um, I hope so, Jasper. <laughs> it's basically opaque water. Yeah. There is a difference, though, as far as um, brush stroke, um, because you can lift the color underneath. So that I have to remember. It's kind of, I find gouache almost in between acrylic and watercolor in a way. So, um, so let's put, now, yeah, I'm thinking, I'm thinking of, of um, steps ahead so i'm thinking of okay so this tomato is red do you want highlights on it you want a uh, variation of of the red color but in the same token you don't want to do too many brush strokes because then you can lift the color beneath but um so do you just start with a light go to dark or dark go to light 
I recently bought some acrylic gouache. Oh, did you, Anne? Have you tried them yet? Acrylic gouache. Yeah, you can get a acrylic gouache. So that probably, to me, acrylic gouache is, I would class it more of acrylics, but they're matte finished to me. I might actually like that. Yeah, um, but they are darn expensive. That's the only thing. Whew. So I think it's cheaper to buy uh, a matte acrylic than it would be a gouache acrylic. All right. Well, we were not going to learn unless we do. So, and that's what I always preach to you guys. <laughs> so I got to follow my own advice, right? So I'm going to start. I always like going from the back working forward in acrylics. So I'm going to do the same with gouache. So let's do, let's do these, this um, red here. Now my paintbrush is um, damp. And in the gouache is very, very opa or, uh, opaque. So it's... I'm gonna put a base coat. Now if you have any experience or you know something about it, put it in chat. Or if you're watching the replay, put it in the description or in the comments below. So you, I'd love the all the help I can get. Cause you you gotta help your fellow artists. That's what I, I always uh, think. Now, see that is. A little difficult getting a straight line. So I would imagine you could blend on the canvas too. I don't know. Um, do I go around the leaves or do I leave that open and do them later? These are all the things I think about when I get into a new medium. And then I do a lot of practicing to see what, how it all works. I'm confused. Yeah, because acrylic paint can't be diluted after it's dry. Yeah, but they, uh, I don't know, I think I don't know. I think it's just uh, acrylic paint and they're just calling it gouache, <laughs> but it's matte in my humble opinion. That's why I like um, craft paint because it, it's matte and it's a whole lot cheaper. So really, I think, I don't know. I think I like a little stiffer brush. Um, yeah, I'm gonna try a stiffer brush just to see what the difference is. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna try. Let's see if this one will work. It's a craft brush, but it's a little stiffer, just a tiny bit stiffer. But I think I can get a better um, edge. Yeah, I like that. So there you go. I learned something already. 
so I can get it uh, stiffer brush that makes a little bit of a easier tighter edge on it you learn uh, different everyone's different too um, just because I don't like it doesn't mean it's the right thing to do for you you have to experiment with brushes everybody works differently and some people hate flat brushes some people only work with round brushes so um, if you want to try uh, brushes out just get like as far as uh, shape and um, let's see and softness or spring I guess you could say then you there's a lot of brushes out there that you can try um, you don't have to get into the really expensive ones just try some uh, midline like uh, Robert Simmons is a really good brush for acrylic and they also have watercolor brushes too I haven't tried theirs but if they're anything like their acrylic brushes I would imagine they're they're really quite nice to work with um, yeah if you got any views on that pipe up let them know I love short handle yeah I like short handle brushes too um, I find the long handle are good for if you're working on uh, a, a big canvas and you're on a easel then yeah I like uh, using a long handled I find acrylics hard to control on paper rather than on a canvas oh really see I find it the opposite <laughs> Isn't that funny? See, we're all different. Um, all the information is Japanese. The description states that acrylic polymer emulsion, opaque matte, and water resistance. Okay. Um, I think, though, that if you try your craft paint, if you want to give it a try and you don't want to um, invest in too much money, Try craft paint. They're not quite as opaque, but they're darn close. And it'll give you an idea whether you, you're going to like it or not. Um, these ones are really inexpensive. Uh, I'm not sure. I think, well, I got them on Amazon. So they were, they were a pretty good price. Uh, what's the other one? Poster paints is another one that's very similar, and they're they're a little more reasonable too. Okay, so while that's drying, let's do the. Um, I'm going to mix a color. For here, with a little bit of green. All right. And I'm going to gray it down by adding a, a smidgen of, of uh, red. So if you, don't, if you find that the color is way too bright and you want the value to be down a little bit, add the opposite color to what you're using and that'll help you. And then I'm going to light it a little bit on one side here. Just a smidgen. Take some off of my brush. I don't want to add water. So I'm just going to wipe it with a paper towel. And this should be close enough. Yep, not bad. A little close enough to the color I want. 
And then we can add highlights and whatever. So you could do this, make your leaf um, print from watercolor. Uh, say you want to do roses. You could make your, pick a bunch of rose petals, or we're not petals, um, leaves. And then you could uh, make your petals. Um, either a rosebud or open, something open. Okay, let's add a little bit more white to that. Let's see if it goes over. Okay, now when you're going over, I think you need a soft brush. That way you don't scrape that area. Let's see. This is a little different. So I think uh, soft brushes have its place. Like any other, um, I need more. A little too thin. Let's do this again. Mix it. Add a little red. A little white. I think you have to have a lot on your brush too, probably. Like I said, I'm learning. It's over top, I think it has to be fatter. Um, as far as thickness. Uh, depends on the, see if I go over that, it's taking up the, it's showing the paint down below. So, is the trick, um, I don't know, a little, there's a, like a Goldilocks <laughs> amount of water you need. Um, maybe. But this is something I'll have to play with. Maybe it's just ta uh, touch instead of stroke when you're going over top of a, another color like that. I don't know. These are the things you learn. But it's fun. Um, they are very forgiving. Let's see. Um, I'm definitely going to try this today with my roses or tomatoes. Awesome, Tiff. Um, lucky me, but... chatting with artists here is we all have var varying yeah, that's exactly a eh? so true so true it's fun to um, pick each other's brains <laughs> okay let's get into some of this dark some of these are really really um, let's see how dark this oh yes this will this will work And imagine you can before that dries mix on the paper too. Let's try. 
So I'm going to take the same color that's already on there to integrate it. On there. Interesting. A little bit of water, I think. Let's see. So I'm just playing with the water content. Just to see what difference. Yeah, that's better. So in some aspects, you can mix even um, the, the layer below a little bit. That's kind of cool. So a little bit of water on the brush for what I'm doing seems to help. I'll be a little bit on there. Let's it's always fun to experiment. You never know what you're gonna invent or figure out. But if you don't, if you're too scared to try and do something, you'll never find out if it would work. And there's always, always paper for you. So if it doesn't work, oh well. You learned something. The way I look at it. Let's do a little bit of a shadow in here. I just have to be careful with how many strokes and definitely this softer brush doing this um, step is helping. That's interesting. All right. Now I want to do a little bit of a highlight. So if I add a little bit of yellow to this orange, And we can just dab on a little bit. And they don't have to be all the same. They can be different. There. And because this is going to be uh, fairly um, matte textured, if you so want, you can get your colored pencils out too and add even more to this. Um, let's do a little bit of the stem. I want to. I'll lighten that up a little bit. So I can add, because this is regular acrylic, or not acrylic, uh, gouache, I could actually reactivate this um, if it dries, which is cool. So a little bit of uh, highlights here and there on the stem. 
you got to be careful though, because it will reactivate the layer below. So less strokes is, is the best. Uh, it is a, um, a different way of uh, applying paint than watercolor or acrylic. So it's a little bit on its own. But I like it. I can see why um, a lot of these gouache artists <laughs> get totally addicted. I like too that uh, a lot of these gouache artists do their um, stuff in their journals. Uh, I love that. I love journaling, art journaling. So that's fun. A little bit of a. Now, if I take a little bit more. It's almost got a little bit more of this green in it. Let's see if we can match. Oh, we'll just put some of this in here, here and there. It doesn't have to be in, in at all, but it's very, very close to the colors that I had there. So this is where you can either emphasize areas or if you like the hit and miss type of look then just leave it it's totally up to you I think it's it's a really neat um, art form and it, it starts, it does a job for you before you're even, uh, like it paints itself doing the watercolor stuff. Hey, Wendy. All right. I'm going to just add a highlight and I want this to be... A little bit of red, I think, and a lot of white. I want more on the pink side. Wow, that red's powerful. All right. So we can just... Wipe some of that off. Nope, it's not doing what I want. Hmm, okay. So to either too much water on my brush or not enough paint. Let's try this one here. There's definitely a brush stroke um, the way you use your brush stroke that helps. And I think I'm going to do some dark green here, just a bit. I think it needs it. Maybe mm, a little darker. And I just want a little bit of a shadow under here.
This is very watered down. But let's see what we get. Mm. A little darker maybe in the center. Just under here where it would be kind of shadowed. Just playing. You have to be very expressive, I guess, with your paint strokes. I have such a unique leaf structure. Yeah, don't they? They're cool. All right, let's try that maybe, and we'll see what else we can do with it. Nasturtium, yeah, I probably would. They have, uh, make sure you put it down with the underside of the leaf against the paper. But yeah, I, I think they would really work. That would be really cool. All right. All right, so now what I like to do the best is colored pencil. Love colored pencil. So let's see. I'm just going to put that over there for a minute. And I got a really dark green here. This is the Brute Fooner. <laughs> I got these online on that. Amazon, I think, and they are really good. I like them, and they were a pretty good price. So let's see if I can do anything. Now, these are still a little bit tiny bit um, damp, so I'm gonna play with this first. So you don't have to do every single bit in uh, color pencil. You can leave areas, you can do whatever you want. I just like color pencil, I always have for fine details. I'm a detail, I love detail. If you followed my channel, you probably already know that. It's just the way I roll. I could spend hours and hours just doing detail. Um, so you can enhance some of the lines, or if you do, if you like all of these. Marks from the watercolor, just leave them. Um, sometimes I like to enhance the veining a little bit just by either adding a shadow or a highlight on them. It gives them a little bit more noticeability, <laughs> I guess you could say. Um, It doesn't have to be a lot. It can be very simple. Uh, 
Let one's like that. Doesn't take much. I like the um, the way that it kind of drifts into nothing. I think that's kind of cool looking. Well, this one I think I'll just add a little bit of uh, color just to bring that out a little bit more. Like that. And it's just like, like I said, you don't have to do the whole thing. Just do bits and pieces and your, your uh, viewer's eye will fill in the blanks. That's what I like. Uh, they have such, okay, I already read that. And depends on how much you want to do too. Okay, let's try and use a white on there. White. Like this. Nope. There it is. Okay. Nope. It's not going to, I don't think it's dry enough. Let's try it. All right. Might be because there's a lot of uh, layers on there. You can't press too hard, so it just pulls it up. No, it's not. That's not. Seem, doesn't seem to go on this one. So we could add a little bit more with our brush. Where is it? Yeah, that's it. It's a little bit more on the I just wanted a little bit A little brighter in some areas. Might be too bright, but I'm learning. <laughs> Just learning. Playing. Let's put a little bit of orange back in there. Where did I put it? There it is. A little bit more of this in. Uh, too much water. Yeah, it does does reactivate. So that's good and and bad at the same time. Makes it a little easier to try again. Let's see. layering Good. 
kind of like that. Gives me another, just lightens that area so it's not too bright. Like that. And then I can go in with a little bit. Let's see if I can do this. So just a bit of a highlight, not as much. Not as many um, marks, brush strokes, because it just pulls it up just a bit. So one right here up on the top, because it would be the brightest, that. And maybe there, a little bit brighter. And right in here. It's kind of like a, when you do eyes, the glint isn't just a white mark. It's a, you gradually add It's really good, isn't it, to mix it up? Yeah, those purists are so boring. <laughs> um, colorists, it felt like cheating, but I would do it anyways because it takes sense and doesn't devalue the work of the art at all. Before mixing it. Before mixed media came along, I believed I had to do entire paintings with just one medium. I loved mixing mixed media so much more and glad it's accepted. Isn't that the truth, Jasper? Yeah, that's how it was when I went to art school. You didn't dare <laughs> mix stuff. It wasn't heard of. Uh, yeah, I love it. All right, I think that's all I'm going to do because I like the way it's looking. Um, maybe a, just a tad. See, this is what I do. I look and I'll go, oh, no, maybe just a little bit more. And then, you know, hours go by and <laughs> it's still doing stuff. And just a little bit of a lighter area on the green here in patches. Let's see. Um, be sure to uh, come back on Thursday. We, Nina and I have a announcement you guys have to have to see and it's going to be awesome so if you want to find out what we're what we've been up to <laughs> I'm not gonna spill the beans you'll have to come and see Okay, like that. I, I remember a tutor saying no one, no one medium. Yeah, yeah. There is more room at the table for more people. I think that, yeah, exactly, Anne. And there's so many effects you get when you add more different mediums. Some mediums have their own um, look, like uh, watercolor has that very atmospheric, soft look that is very difficult to get in other mediums. So why not use it with other mediums? <laughs> like, uh, yeah. 
um, I think I need a little bit on the tips of my um, leaves here. There's a little bit of a darker Not much, but there is a little darker mark on the tips. They're po kind of pointed. And it's not, you know, it's not uh, like a photographic type of thing, but it does have some um, detail, but just enough that you know it's a painting and not a, <laughs> a photograph. I, I am um, in awe with these people that can do those photorealism. Like, oh, they're just amazing to me. The detail that they can see, it's just really something. But in the same token, you just reproduce the photograph. So why would somebody want you to do that <laughs> photograph over again? You know what I mean? I know it's the ability is there, but depends, I guess, what you want. Um, but I admit I agree not using white paint in watercolor because it never looks as good as the white in the... Yeah, that's true. All right. I think it, looked, I think it turned out pretty darn good, if I may say so myself. I'm happy with it, I think. I'm always, uh, I'm the type of artist too that um, will revisit. I won't say it's done until a couple days or maybe even a week later. Because I'll, I'll, I'll play with it for a bit. And when I come back the next day, I might see something I didn't see before. All right. I think it's done. So here's my little tomatoes. <laughs> I mean, I love this technique. I think it is so cool. I really do. Um, I don't think that other one's probably not even close to being dry, but we'll take a look. And you could make a bunch of these up ahead of time and then just bring them out when you want to do something. And it's still damp, but I'm going to leave it and see, um, or should I take it off? It's almost dry. I don't think it's going to move. I didn't put as much on it. I'm going to sneak peek just to see if it's... Okay, that one doesn't have any water under it. Let's see if this one does. I think it might, might be able to, yeah, I'm going to take it up. Okay, here's the big reveal. Not bad. Oh, look at that one, guys. Oh, I love it. Isn't that cool? Look at the detail in that. That is so cool. So get your plants out, guys. <laughs> I'm going to tell you to go in the ditch again. Go in the ditch. Get some plants. No, that one was a little bit wet. 
But sometimes that looks nice too. Um, when it's kind of foggy in some areas and other areas, very, very detailed. So an experiment with the colors. As you can see that some of them took the pink, some didn't. Um, that is so cool. Yeah, exactly. It's finished just like that. You could frame that. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see. I better go because I have a dinner I have to go to for my grandson's birthday. So I have to get stuff ready. And clean this mess up. And don't forget to come on Thursday where I'm going to make my announcement. And um, Lena's, I think, will also be announcing either this week or next week. I can't remember what she said she was going to do. And uh, we'll see you next week. Same time, same channel. On, on Thursday, yes, at 6 o'clock. And it will be a preview, so I'll be in chat. Not preview, uh, premiere. <laughs> premiere, and I'll be in chat, so I'll be able to chat with you. Um, great. I'm glad you liked it. I hope you'll give it a try. It's a great technique. And you could even do little bits and pieces if you had an idea of... of uh, a watercolor painting that you were going to do, but you wanted to have some of this in the background, you can make it a lot softer colors too. So give it a try. I think it's cool. All right. You have a fantastic creative day, everyone, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.